during the rain. But eagle avoids the rain by flying above the clouds. Friends, problems are common, but it is the attitude which makes the difference. I would now request Shri Prasad Lolikar to welcome the gathering and introduce Dr. Mashalkar, a man with a different attitude. Hi, Chakaryavali Che Mukhel Soire, Ani Mukhel Vakte, Dr. Raghunath Mashalkar, Goy Raja Che Manadik Mukhemantri, Dr. Pramod Savant, Hangazamille Sakale Zankar. आणि वांगड्यानो ज्या प्रकारात भाऊ साहेब बांदोळकरान आपले निम्ने फंक्शन अटेंड केले त्याच प्रकारात आज 50 वर्षानंतर त्यांची 50 वर्षाची पुण्यतिथी मनेतना पहिले फंक्शन जाता 50 वर्षानंतरही भाऊ साहेबाचे यादी हे ही वास्तु आणि हो प्रकार विसरूक पावलना हे आईच्या उपस्थितीवेल्यान जाणवता भाऊ साहेब बांदोळकरांचे योग्य वर्णन गदी माडगुळकर आणि आपल्या कवितेतलन केला सिंधू सागराने आपले काळीज दिले आहे या माणसाला खवळेल उसळेल पण सीमा सुटणार नाहीत दयानंद नुसते नाव नाही तो स्वभाव आहे याचा हा सहज विसावेल त्या आसनालाच शासन समजतो अवघा गोमंतक हा चालेल तो मार्ग नेतृत्वाचाच असतो भाऊ साहेबाचे इतले साधे सोपे वर्णन आणि खंच्या शब्दांनी करचे त्यांचे त्या वेळचे सेक्रेटरी शरद उपासने आणि त्यांच्या औदर्याचं एक साधोस खीण बोरून दवल्ले असा ते म्हणतात कोयनेचो जेंना भूकंप झालो तेंना भाऊ साहेब थंच्या लोकाचे वेदना पुसपा गेले वतना पैशांची बॅग घेऊन वाटपा खातिर गेले थोय असे जाणवले शरद उपासने की मनीस परतो परतो रांगेक लावून परते परते पैसे घेता ताणी भाऊ साहेबाक सांगले की पळय ते तुका फटेतात भाऊ साहेबान त्यांका म्हणले असे किद्याक तुका दिसता तू असे किद्याक समजना की त्यांची गरज आपल्यान दिल्या पैशा परसही चढ असा म्हणून ते परते रांगेक रावतात आणि परते घेतात उपासनी त्यांका परते म्हणले मला तू दीत रावतलो तर भाऊ साहेबान त्यांका म्हणले ते मागायला थकत नाही तर मी द्यायला का थकू हे त्या वडल्या काळजाचो हो मनीस म्हणूनच एस एम जोशी म्हणतात भाऊ साहेबाक जाय आशिले जर कॅबिनेट डिसिजन घेऊन असेंब्लीक ठराव पास करून त्याच्यान गोय महाराष्ट्रात विलीन करू येताले पण लोकशाहीचेर श्रद्धा आशिलो हो मनीस ज्याने ओपिनियन पोल मान्य केलो लोकांचं ओपिनियन पोल मान्य केलोच त्या भायर सेंट्रल गव्हर्मेंटान जेव्हा त्याला सांगले की ओपिनियन पोल जर निपक्षपाती जातो जर तुवें सी एम पदा वेल्यान राजीनामा दिवन सकल देवपास जाय त्यांना उदार अंतकरणान हो नेतो सकल देवलो या एद्या व्हडल्या काळजाचो हो मनीस ज्याची पन्नासावी पुण्यतीत आज आम्ही मनयतात आणि ती मनोवपाच्या निमतान जे व्याख्यान दवरला ते त्याच एद्या व्हडल्या मनशाचे आज आमच्या मध्ये असात डॉक्टर रघुनाथ माशेलकर एक्याऐंशी वर्षाचो हो तरुण चैतन्याक वय नसता हे जर कळचे जर ते फक्त रघुनाथ माशेलकर हा पळवनच न्यूटनान ज्या पुस्तकात ज्या पेनान आपली सई मारली त्याच पुस्तकात त्याच पेन हातात घेऊन सई मारपी हो भारतातलो हो गोमंत पुत्र म्हणून त्यांना फेलो ऑफ रॉयल सोसायटी हे मानांकन प्राप्त झाला रघुनाथ माशेलकर हळडी घाटाची लढाई भारत भारतात जिकून दिवपी आणि हळडीचं पेटंट भारताच्या नावार करपी हो सुपुत्र ज्याने फक्त हळडीच्या नावाचं पेटंट भारताच्या नावार केलो ना तर अनेक शास्त्रज्ञ तयार केले जे आपल्या या जागतिक लढाईत भारता खातीर पेटंट मागपा खातीर झगडटले आणि झुजामळार झिकतले माशेलकरान अनेक अधिकार पदां भुशयली त्यातली काय म्हणार डायरेक्टर ऑफ नॅशनल केमिकल लॅबोरेटरी एकोणीसशे एकोणऐंशी ते पंच्याण्णव मागीर ते झाले डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ सी एस आय आर चेअरमन ऑफ नॅशनल इनोव्हेशन फाउंडेशन प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ ग्लोबल रिसर्च अलायन्स प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडियन नॅशनल सायन्स अकॅडमी त्या भायर अनेक देशाच्या अनेक युनिव्हर्सिटीक व्हिजिटिंग प्रोफेसर म्हणूनही ते गेला हार्वर्ड युनिव्हर्सिटी दोन हजार सात ते दोन हजार बारा डेलावेर युनिव्हर्सिटी एकोणीसशे शहात्तर ते एकोणीसशे अठ्ठ्याऐंशी 
टेक्नॉलॉजी युनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेनमार्क एकोणीसशे ब्याऐंशी सर लुईस मॅथसन डिस्टिंग्विश प्रोफेसर ॲट मोनाश युनिव्हर्सिटी पन पंधरा वर्षा दोन हजार सात ते दोन हजार बावीस त्याचप्रमाणे अनेक भारतीय युनिव्हर्सिटीचे चॅन्सलर म्हणूनही त्यांनी काम केलं आसाम युनिव्हर्सिटी सिल्चर अकॅडमी ऑफ सायंटिफिक अँड इनोव्हेशन रिसर्चाचे चॅन्सलर इन्स्टिट्यूट ऑफ केमिकल टेक्नॉलॉजीचे चॅन्सलर आणि जिओ इन्स्टिट्यूट मा जिओ युनिव्हर्सिटी जी नव्यान स्थापन झाला त्याचे चॅन्सलर पद ते भूषेतात स्वातंत्र्यानंतर अनेक भारताच्या पंतप्रधानाच्या सायंटिफिक ॲडवायझरी काउन्सिलाचे सदस्य म्हणून त्याने काम केला माशेलकर सदांच फर्स्ट म्हण अनेक वर्षा मुखार रावले हे फर्स्ट खंचे डॉक्टर माशेलकर हॅज मेनी फर्स्ट टू हिज क्रेडिट ही वॉज द फर्स्ट इंडियन टू विन मोस्ट प्रेस्टिजियस टुआस लिनोवो सायन्स प्राईज इन टू थाउजंड एटीन द हायेस्ट सायन्स प्राईज बाय द वर्ल्ड अकॅडमी ऑफ सायन्स द फर्स्ट इंडियन फ्रॉम इंडिया टू बी इलेक्टेड अ फेलो ऑफ द यू एस नॅशनल अकॅडमी ऑफ इन्व्हेंटर्स अँड द फर्स्ट एशियन सायंटिस्ट टू विन द बिझनेस वीक अवॉर्ड स्टार ऑफ एशिया अवॉर्ड्स ॲट द जो ॲट द हँड्स ऑफ जॉर्ज बुश देन प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ यू एस ए फर्स्ट अँड ओनली सायंटिस्ट सो फार टू विन जे आर डी टाटा कॉर्पोरेट लिडरशिप अवॉर्ड फर्स्ट ज्युरी मेंबर फ्रॉम इंडिया to be on prestigious queen elizabeth prize of engineering which is considered as equivalent to the nobel prize in engineering marshall karan innovation achi ek veglis ganga bharata khadli tane innovation ane corporate institution ake promote kele he has promoted innovation in corporate world chaired reliance innovation council के पी आय टी टेक्नॉलॉजीज इनोव्हेशन काउन्सिल थर्मॅक्स इनोव्हेशन काउन्सिल पर्सिस्टन्स सिस्टम इनोव्हेशन काउन्सिल मेरिको फाउंडेशन इनोव्हेशन काउन्सिल ते अनेक कंपनीचे डायरेक्टरही आशिले आणि डायरेक्टर आसात टाटा ग्रुप रिलायन्स इंडस्ट्रीज टाटा मोटर्स हिंदुस्तान युनिलेवर थर्मॅक्स पिरामेल एंटरप्रायजेस अँड टेक्नॉलॉजीज अशा अनेक कंपनीच्या डायरेक्टर बोर्डाचे ते डायरेक्टर म्हणून काम करतात ताणी आपल्या आवईच्या नावान अंजनी माशेलकर फाउंडेशनाच्या नावान एक इन्क्लुझिव्ह इनोव्हेशन अवॉर्ड सुरू केला जो फायदो भारतातल्या सगळ्या यंग सायंटिस्टांक मेळटा माशेलकराक भारत सरकारान पद्मश्री पद्मभूषण आणि पद्मविभूषण पुरस्कार देऊन गौरवांकित केला आणि माशेलकराक सराक सगळ्यात काळजात भितरलो आशिल्लो म्हणटा तो पुरस्कार म्हणा गोंयच्या सरकारान आणि सबंद गोयान तांकां दिल्लो गोमंत विभूषण पुरस्कार नानी पालखेवाला म्हणता जेव्हा मनीस खं असा व्हड पावड्याचेर पावता तेव्हा तो झुंबर जाऊन फक्त परजळटा पण एक झुंबर दुसऱ्या झुंबराक जर ते केले जायत जाल्यार दुसरे झुंबर पेटना ते काम फक्त मेणवात करता एद्या व्हडल्या पावड्याचेर पावणी माशेलकर सरान मेणवाती सारखे अनेक मेणवाती पेटेलात गोयभरात आणि भारतभरात असो हो गोमंत पुत्र जगभर नामना मिळिल्लो तुमच्या मुखार सादर करता आणि माझी दोन रुत्रा सोपयता देव बरे कर आय वुड नाव रिक्वेस्ट आर लिन कुना टू प्रेझेंट बुके फ्लावर्स टू डॉक्टर रघुनाथ माशेलकर एंड मनाली प्रभुगावकर will present a bouquet of flowers to our chief minister dr pramod savan <laughs> ladies and gentlemen it is very befitting that the government of goa has organized this memorial lecture by a visionary who has a vision for the nation on the occasion of 50th death anniversary of another visionary who had a vision for his state of goa may i now request our chief minister dr pramod savant to express himself on the occasion
भाऊसाहेब बांदोडकर हांच्या पन्नासाव्या पुण्यतिथीच्या निमित्तात आज आयोजित केल्या या खासा लेक्चरा खातीर आमच्या मध्ये असतात डॉक्टर रघुनाथ माशेलकर आम्ही जसे म्हणतात की एक गोमंत विभूषणाचे दुसऱ्या गोमंत विभूषणान तांचे आमच्या मुखार सांगप या खासा सोहळ्याक त्यांच्या खूप खूप गोय सरकारच्या वतीने स्वागत करता मान्यवरांचे जे खासा करून वेगवेगळ्या क्षेत्रातले मान्यवर हंगासर असतात त्यांचे हा स्वागत करता गोय सरकारच्या वतीन पुराय या कार्यक्रमात म्हणजे आयचं हो लेक्चर असतात अशाच पद्धतीची लेक्चर सिरीज फुडले वर्षभर खासा करून भुरग्यां खातीर भाऊची पन्नास वर्षाच्या कार्यकाळातलो त्यांचं पहिलं मुख्यमंत्री म्हणून तांच्यांनी केलेले कार्य हे आयच्या युवकाच्या समोर येऊपास जाय म्हणून तर खाशा कार्यावळ पुराय वर्षभर वेगवेगळ्या जणांक हे लेक्चर सिरीज अशा पद्धतीत वेगवेगळ्याचे इन्स्पिरेशनल टॉक हे आयोजन केले वतले भाऊसाहेब बांदोडकरांचे स्मृतीस्थल हे रिनोवेशन करण्याचा पायाभरणी सुवाळो आजच झालं फुडल्या वर्षभराच्या भीतर आम्ही भाऊसाहेब बांदोडकरांचे स्मृतीस्थल हे परत एकदा पन्नास वर्षाच्या उपरांत रिनोवेशन करण्याचे काम आम्ही हातात घेतलं तिसरी आणि महत्वाची गजाल कारण पणजे जिमखानात आम्ही असतात भाऊक क्रिकेट आणि फुटबॉल हो त्यांच्या सामचो काळजाक लागी आशिल्लो आणि तेकाच लागून भाऊसाहेब बांदोडकर फुटबॉल चषक परत एकदा आम्ही गोयात सुरुवात करता जी एफ ए आणि जी एफ डी सी हांच्या वतीन आम्ही ओनू गोयातले फुटबॉलपटू हांच्या खातीर फुटबॉल टुर्नामेंटाचे आयोजन केला वेळ पडलो जर हो फुटबॉल टुर्नामेंट एव्हरी इयर गोय सरकार भाऊसाहेब बांदोडकर फुटबॉल टुर्नामेंट हे दर वर्षा खेळयतले अशाच पद्धतीच्यो वेगवेगळ्या एक्टिव्हिटीज तांचे फॅमिलीज ट्रस्ट जे आसत तांच्यांनी आयोजन करण्याचे ठरवल्या वेगवेगळ्या राजकीय मळाचेरही वेगवेगळ्या एक्टिव्हिटी जायत असा हा खरे म्हणल्यार आम्ही म्हणता की एकोणीसशे एकसष्टान गोय मुक्त झाले आणि त्या वेळार गोय महाराष्ट्रात विलीन जाता काय किती अशाच पद्धतीचा एक संभ्रम असला म्हणपा काय हरकत ना संभ्रम किद्याक तर बऱ्याच जणांक त्यांना ते जाय आशिले घडे कदाचित म्हणजे त्यांना वेगळ्या पद्धतीचा क्रायटेरिया आशिलो म्हणून तर ओपिनियन पोल झालो ओपिनियन पोल झालो आणि ताज्या उपरांत सुद्धा म्हणजे ओपिनियन पोल गोय राज्य म्हणून दौरपाचा झालो जाय जर भाऊक सिंगल ठरावातल्यान गोय महाराष्ट्रात घालूकू येता आशिले पण भाऊन खूप व्हिजन फुडे पळले आणि भाऊन तेच व्हिजन पळले म्हणून खूप गजाली गोयात जावपास शकल्यो आमच्या सारखिल्ले सामान्यातले सामान्य युवक हे आमदार मंत्री आणि मुख्यमंत्री पदाचे पावले अजापी कदापि शक्य नाशिले आम्ही पळता की इतकेच नाही तर भाऊन जे शैक्षणिक मळाचे सांस्कृतिक मळाचे इंडस्ट्रीयल सेक्टरात तांच्यांनी केलेलं वावर आज आमका खूप मोठ्या प्रमाणात वेगवेगळ्या सेक्टरात पळवपा मेळटा आणि विशेष करून भाऊन केलेले काम हे प्रायमरी स्कूल आयजूय बी गोयातल्या म्हणजे गाव तिथे शाळा व जो कन्सेप्ट भाऊसाहेबान त्यांना राबयलो आणि वेगवेगळ्या एका एका पंचायतीन चार चार पाच पाच शाळा सुद्धा असतात आम्ही सगळ्यांनी पळल्या आणि त्योच शाळा जाल्ल्या कारणान आम्ही हाय लिटरसी रेट गोयात जो झालो म्हणजे चौदा वर्षा उसरा स्वतंत्र मेळून सुद्धा लिटरसी रेटाच्या बाबतीत आम्ही सगळ्यात पुढे जे पावले त्याच प्रायमरी स्कुला खातीर आणि म्हणून आम्ही गावागावातल्यान भुरगे शिक्षण घेऊपा शकले आणि ते पुढे पावले भाऊसाहेब बांदोडकर हांच्यानी गोयच्यो मुख्यमंत्र्यांनी पळता असताना न्याय समता आणि प्रगती या तत्वाकडे म्हणजे ते वचनबद्ध रावले आणि त्याच पद्धतीत कार्य करीत ते पुढे गेले मला दिसता या राज्याच्या उदरगतीच्या बाबतीत शिक्षण भलायकी मुळावी बांधावळ ग्रामीण उदरगत हांच्यानी त्याचेर खूप मोठ्या प्रमाणात त्यांच्यानी कार्य केले म्हणून त्यांच्यानी प्रोग्रेसिव्ह कायदे हाडपास ते फाटी पडूंक ना आम्ही पळता की वेगवेगळे प्रोग्रेसिव्ह कायदे कारण पोर्तुगीजातल्यान हंगासल्यान गेल्या उपरांत जे डेव्हलपमेंट फ्रंटाचे आणि वेगवेगळे कायदे हाडपा जाय असले त्याय बाबतीत ते फुडे आशिले सांस्कृतिक दायज असतले सौमिक सोबिताय असतली हाजेय फुडे त्यांच्यानी तितकी खबरदारी घेतली आणि ते फुडे गेले सस्टेनेबल टुरिजम हाची सुरुवात जर केन्ना झाली असत जर त्यांच्या पहिल्या टेन्युअरातल्यान त्यांच्यानी सस्टेनेबल टुरिजम हाजो बुन्यादीचा फातर घातलो आणि आज टुरिजम क्षेत्रात आम्ही खूप फुडे वता असताना आम्ही पळता आणि त्याच लागून गोय एक एक दृष्टीन आम्ही पाऊल फुडे मारता आणि आमका सगळ्या जणांक एक एक गोय लहान राज्य जरी असले जर तसं पळून वचत जर भाऊचा प्रभाव व सायडीच्या राज्यांचेरही आमका दिसून येतो म्हणून तर सायडीचे महाराष्ट्र असत कर्नाटक असत इवन दो मध्य प्रदेशपर्यंत 
थंयसरले मिनिस्टर्स हे भाऊसाहेबाक प्रेज करताले कारण भाऊसाहेबाचे त्या पद्धतीचे ॲडमिनिस्ट्रेशन आणि भाऊसाहेब त्या पद्धतीचे घेवपाची डिसिजन्स म्हणजे गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया काही डिसिजनांक त्यांच्याबद्दल त्या ज्या वेळार इम्प्रेसिव्ह आशिले आणि कॉपरेटिव्ह फेडरलिजम दवरपा खातीर तांच्यांनी एका पद्धतीचो समन्वय जो आशिल्लो व इतर राज्या बरोबर ते प्रस्थापित करपा शकिले मग आज खूप बरं दिसतं की त्यांच्या पन्नासाव्या पुण्यतिथीच्या निमित्तात पण आम्ही ज्या जिमखान्यात त्यांच्यानी आपला अखेरचा श्वास घेतलो त्या पणजे जिमखान्याचे हा अभिनंदन करता की सातत्यात भाऊसाहेबांच्यो स्मृती तांच्यांनी ताज्यो दवरल्या तांच्यांनी जाग्यो दवरल्या आणि सातत्यात जिमखान्यात वेगवेगळे कार्यक्रम करता असताना थोड्याच दिसा पहिली भाऊसाहेबांचो क्रिकेट पॅड आणि बॅड हातात घेतलो स्टॅच्यू अनावरण करपाचे भाग्य त्यांच्या फॅमिली ट्रस्टात जरी स्टॅच्यू त्यांच्यानी पणजे जिमखान्यात केलं अनावरण करपाचे भाग्य म्हाका लाभले आणि हा परत एकदा म्हणजे भाऊसाहेब बांदोडकर आणि माझा गाव व तसं पळून वचत जर खूप लागचो संबंध असा आणि हे भाग्य म्हाका लाभले भाऊंची पहिली मायन ही पाळी ग्रामपंचायत क्षेत्रातल्या कोठंबी गावात आशिल्ली ज्या कोठंबी गावात मजो जन्म जो आणि त्यांचे मायनिंग अजूनही त्याच पद्धतीत थंयसर सुरू असा तांच्यांनी आपले पहिले हायस्कूल हे आमच्या मजाच मतदारसंघात वेळग्या हंगासर त्यांच्यानी सुरुवात केले तांच्यांनी थंयसर प्रायमरी सेकेंडरी आणि हायर सेकेंडरी पर्यंतचे एडुकेशन हे त्यांच्यांनी आमच्या वेगळ्या गावात श्रीमती बांदोडकर हायस्कूल या नावात त्यांच्यांनी सुरुवात केले आजूय बी खूप बऱ्या पद्धतीत हे हायस्कूल सुरुवात असा गोयच्या उदरगतीत त्यांचा खूप मोठो वाटो असा मला दिसता हे सगळे सांगता असताना आज गोय ह्या देशाच्या बाबतीत आम्ही जसे म्हणता की आझादीका अमृत कालात आम्ही विकसित भारत ट्वेंटी फोर्टी सेवन हा जो विचार करता तर खरच गोय फाटी उरचे नाही आणि ते गोय फाटी उरपा जायना म्हणून योग्य मनीस जे आम्ही म्हणतात डॉक्टर रघुनाथ पाशेलकर पद्मश्री पद्मभूषण हांचं आज हंगासर आमच्या समोर जो टॉक जावपो असा त्या टॉकात हे सगळे सांगता असताना हा शेणे गोय बाबाची दोनच उतरां तुमच्या समोर मांडटा आणि माझे हे सोपयता गोड म्हणजे गोय शेणे गोय बाबाची ही कविता असा त्या गोड म्हणजे गोय सुंदर म्हणजे गोय पुरविल्ले नामनीचे चढ मोठे भाग्याचे उंच माथे कोकणाचे हेच म्हणजे गोय हे गोयचे सदोदित आम्ही सगळे जण आम्ही पळता की गोय हे खूप भाग्यवान असा भाऊसाहेब बांदोडकरा सारखिले भाग्य विधाते गोयात जन्माक आयले आणि त्याचबरोबर गोयची नामना देश आणि विदेशात पावपी डॉक्टर रघुनाथ माशेलकर आज आमच्या मध्ये असा त्याय खातीर आम्ही भाग्यवान असा देव बरे करू Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Raghunath Anant Mashalgar is known for his own world-class scientific research, for his transformative science and innovation institution leadership. He has been an influential thought leader in shaping science, technology and innovation policies in post-liberalized India. He is the man, ladies and gentlemen, who in his book Reinventing India pronounced his Panchashil for the new millennium, child-centered education, women centered family human centered development knowledge centered society and innovation centered india he is mantras of inclusive innovation more from less for more and gandhi engineering have been a constant source of inspiration for corporates and youth alike dr mashalkar fought a 14 month long legal battle to revoke the us patent on haldi and emerged victorious This victory was so significant that it changed the way patents were classified and earned him the moniker of the warrior of Haldighat. A person with stupendous and tremendous achievements of 25 books, 284 research papers to his credit and an honored recipient on, on uh, honored recipient of doctorates by 44 universities from India and abroad. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Raghunath Anand Mashalkar to the dais. sir the audience is yours just one clarification since this is a memorial lecture there will be no questions afterwards sir thank you <coughs> our most uh, beloved chief minister of goa shri pramod samant members of the bandodkar family in fact we are all members of the bandodkar family and i'll explain why i feel like that 
and friends and admirers of uh, revered Bhav Sahib Bandodkar, ladies and gentlemen. It is 50 years ago that uh, to this date Bhav Sahib left us. But uh, Bhav was not, uh, Bhav Sahib was not an individual. He was an institution. Individuals go, institutions don't. So he is around. So although he is no more, he is everywhere for us. I feel most privileged that you thought, the government thought that I was worthy. Yatin, Jyoti, all the family members thought that I was worthy of delivering the very first memorial lecture. There is always something fantastic about being first, all right? Then we'll follow the second and the third, but being first, that's very, very special to me. So I'm very, very grateful to you. Bhavunnami Betlo, Gomantak Maratha Samajacha Karyalayat, Prathana Samajavar, the Donati and Imperial Theatre, the Jabazula, as a Karyalayoto. And he, there's a Karana Soto, Gumuntak Marada Samajagunamala, scholarship Miraji. Malata Artka Dharupi Dermanaloti, but Majasati Barizuti. And he, SSC Made, secondary school certificate exam, I had stood 11th among 135,000 students. And therefore, I was felicitated by him in a not a formal big function. And I still remember, you know. I was Majami uh, Baras Hadkula, not like pot bellied that I am now. And when I saw his magnificent figure, I must tell you, Pramodji, I was, I, I don't know what the sort of uh, how I felt actually. But he made me feel easy. My party were at Teola, Maji Sokoshi Gili. And then I was Charan Sparsha Gila, then I was Ashurad Gitli. And what he said at that time, I still remember. He said, Khub shik, mutha ho, ani gumantakala tuza abhiman vatla vajja asa kaam kar. Ani atats gumanta vibhushan kala mandirat mala tis me dorada tera la mela la, mja zorada dha varsha purvi. Tiaoli mala tanchi athwan zali. Matla mi kaitri kela snar jane, tiaamoli tumi maza ka utuk kela. And I shot Kadri Dhanaz Alasar Kavatla. Bashanchi Surat Karajadi, Ek Gusti Samala Ule Karasato, Jotitai Bandekar, Yansazo Atavansa Pariza, the Pustak Tani Farsunda Lilahe, the Apon Malapatolot, Tachora Bipra Liala, and it told Maja Swadaja. Uh, I did not have the Marathi font, you know. I really appreciate that. So what I wrote there, I will just read out. Because if you want to understand uh, Bhav Sahib, I think that's the best book you can sort of have, as an individual, as a person. Because he was a great human being. So that me lilo ta ki vyaktigat anubhavatun pahilelea वतंत ओगवत्या भाषेत लिहिलेल्या या भाऊंच्या हृदय आठवणी म्हणजे ज्योतिताईंनी आपल्या समाजाला दिलेली अनमोल देणगी आहे यात भाऊंच्या तेजस्वी व्यक्तिमत्वाचे अनेक पैलू दिसतात एंड सर यू टॉक्ड अबाउट मेनी ऑफ हिज क्वालिटीज दातृत्व निरपेक्ष लोकसेवा तडफ धैर्य विवेक चिकाटी Nishta, Kalapriyata, Agdi Chuta Chuta Gustitun, Bounce Mote Gunda Konare, Hek Rudas Persi, Vagdi Agra Vectitra, Kevul Gomanta Kies Nove, the Sura Bartian Sati Prena de Tare. He Marathi Dai. This book is in Marathi, and I think it is our bounden duty that it reaches the world by getting it translated into sort of all languages. So I thought I will. Uh, sort of uh, begin my lecture with this personal uh, 
uh, sort of remarks. The title of my talk today is Building New India as an Exponential Inspirator. Now you might wonder what is this Exponential Inspirator and I will explain to you as I sort of uh, go forward. Now how do I begin? Because I am a scientist, so you will explain, uh, expect me to start with the equation. So I will not disappoint you, I will start with the equation. So there was this meeting uh, of scientists where they are discussing what is the most powerful equation the scientists have created. So somebody got up and said Newton's second law, force equal to? Mass into acceleration, for F equal to F. Then somebody got up and said no, no, no. Einstein, E equal to MC square. And then I was sitting uh, quiet and uh, they said, uh, what do you think is the most uh, important equation? So I said, not Newton, not Einstein. So they were surprised, not Newton, not Einstein, what is it? So I said, according to me, the most powerful equation is E equal to F. Education is equal to future. As simple as that. And that is exactly what Bausaib did. And sir, you elaborated uh, very eloquently his contribution that uh, he had done in education. But I thought I will read out uh, what Jyotita you had written, basically. It's in Marathi, again. Shikshanala bhavundi far mahato dila. Khedopadi asliri nirakshrata pusun kadun bhaujan samajala sakshar karnyasa mahatwasa pahultani uchalla. Tiyatikani khedayatil vo shaharatil garib mulana shikshana chi awad asu nahi shari chi fi badna ashakya asla mule shari zata yetna se. Tiyat mule mula shikshana shivaya gavad bhatkat asat magas lelea samajaya chi mula shiklaya pudhar lelea samajaya chi mazuri kon kare. ती शेफारून त्यांना मान देणार नाहीत अशा स्वार्थी व संकुचित विचारसरणीचे काही पुढारलेले लोक बहुजन समाजाच्या मुलांना मज्जाव करत असत दोज वर द डेज आणि देन अशा या मागासलेल्या समाजात प्रत्येक खेड्यात व कानाकोपऱ्यात जवळजवळ दीड हजार प्राथमिक शिक्षणाच्या सरकारी शाळा भावनी सुरू केल्या लाख दीड लाख मागासलेल्या मुलांची एस एस सीपर्यंत शिक्षणाची सोय सर्वत्र केली एवढंच नव्हे तर भावनी बहुजन समाजाची सर्वांगीण सुधारणा व त्यांच्या जास्तीत जास्त माध्यमिक उच्च शिक्षणाचा फैलाव करून सरकारी व औद्योगिक क्षेत्रात त्यांना मानाचं स्थान व आर्थिक लाभ मिळाला या विचाराने त्यांची गोव्यातच उच्च शिक्षणाची सोय व्हावी म्हणून आर्ट्स सायन्स कॉमर्स फार्मसी मेडिकल इंजिनिअरिंग यासारखी महाविद्यालये सरकारी व नीम सरकारित्या उघडण्यास उत्तेजन दिले गरजू आणि होतकरी विद्यार्थ्यांना स्वतःकडून हजारो रुपये आपले पूज्य पिताजी कैलासवासी बाळकृष्ण बांदोडकर यांच्या स्मरणार्थ द्यायची व्यवस्था केली एकोणीसशे एकोणस एकसष्टला पुण्यातील ज्ञानप्रबोधिनी या शैक्षणिक संस्थेला देणगी देऊन तेथील विद्यालयाला उपकृत केले ज्ञानप्रबोधिनी ही फार मोठी संस्था आहे आय एम प्राऊड टू बी इज करंट प्रेसिडेंट ॲट द मॉमेंट आणि त्यावेळी अशा संस्थेला त्यांनी मदत करणं त्यामुळेच आज ज्ञानप्रबोधिनी जे आहे ते आहे अगदी अल्पकाळात शिक्षणाचा प्रसार इतक्या वेगाने इतरत्र कुठे झाले नसेल ॲट दि स्पीड अँड ॲट दि स्केल अँड दॅट्स व्हेरी व्हेरी सॉर्ट ऑफ इम्पॉर्टंट वाय डिड आय रीड दॅट आय रीड दॅट बिकॉज इट इज इम्पॉर्टंट जस ॲज सर यू एम्फसाईज दिस आय ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू एम्फसाईज दिस द पॉवर ऑफ इक्वेशन ई इक्वल टू एफ Then you said you have done only half the job. You have proposed the equation, but you have not proved it. The fact that I am here is the proof of that. But I will go beyond it. There are a number of proofs, uh, as far as I am concerned, from my life. And I will go back to 17 March 2000. What happened on that day? The venue is uh, the Rashtrapati Bhavan. and it was uh, the day on which padma awards were given and i and ratan tata got padma bhushan one after the other on that day so you will say how does it prove e equal to f then i will tell you why we got them at the hands of k r narayanan who was the president 
Now, K. R. Narayanan was born in a very poor family. He used to walk several kilometers to the school. His parents were so poor that they did not afford the tuition fee. So he would stand outside the class and take notes, so as to say. How did his life get transformed? He got a Tata scholarship. And then, of course, he went on to become the president. My life was not very different. I was born in Mashail. My father died when I was six. My mother could barely read or write. And she took me to Mumbai in search of a job. Life was very tough, as you all know. I walked barefoot until I was 12. I studied in a municipal school, in Marathi school. I remember two meals a day was a challenge. I've gone hungry many a days. My mother was a great uh, food technologist. She used to cook a food by which you will not feel hungry at night. I studied under street lights. And then, as I said, in the 11th standard, ACC, I stood 11 among 1,35,000 students. And I was going to leave school because she was really struggling. And then came Tata Scholarship. And the rest was history. Now, here is an interesting thing. A Tata scholar becomes a president. He gives Padma Bhushan to Tata, because of which he got Tata scholarship, and gives it to another Tata scholar. If this does not prove E equal to F, then nothing will prove E equal to F. And therefore, Bhausaib was right in investing in education. And you are right. In the morning when we had a discussion, you remember we focused on education, skill, how completely committed you are to skill development. That's extremely important because that is the uh, sort of going to be the future. I think I must modify the equation because as a scientist, you know, there is always a challenge if you make small mistake. So the actual equation is not E equal to F. It is E into education into opportunity is equal to F. We have seen PhDs applying for lower division clerk positions when railways sort of apply. That is not on. That means they have no opportunity. And therefore, how do we create opportunity? That's most important. So in this context, let me tell you a story. There is this National Innovation Foundation, which was created by the government in year 2000. I was its first chairman and continued to be one for 18 years. But the real driver was Professor Anil Gupta, basically. I call him, or guru, I call him sort of a modern Gandhi, you know. Like, uh, uh, he, he used to do Shodha Yatras in villages, uh, walking miles, basically. I mean, he has covered Kashmir to Kanyakamari thrice over, by the way, going all around, discovering innovation. And the fundamental belief was that everyone is someone. The fundamental belief was minds on the margin are not marginal minds. Everybody can sort of uh, uh, create. And we used to give awards, actually. President of India used to come and give these awards. Uh, and many, I mean, the very first one I remember, many of them were barefoot who came and Dr. Kalam was so gracious, he served them tea, breaking protocol and so on. So that is the National Innovation Foundation. Then we are selecting a, 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 the chief innovation officer. And I was chairing the interview. And I saw the CV of an individual. He said his, uh, his speciality was branding. So I said, great. Uh, tell me. I want to brand my India. How will you brand India? So he was confused because he had branded a refrigerator, he had branded a car. How do you brand a nation? And then uh, I said, I will help him. So I said, United States of America brands itself as uh, uh, land of opportunity. How do you brand India? Pat came the answer. India is a land of ideas. Now here is the good news. India is a land of ideas. And here is not a so good news. It is America which is land of opportunities. 
That is where the brain drain takes place. So our challenge is creating India as a land of opportunity. Is India becoming a land of opportunity? The answer is yes. And I'm explaining to you why it is sort of land of opportunity. For doing that, let me uh, go to another story. This story is about lilies in the pond. There's a pond where there are lilies and they have the habit of doubling up every day. So day two, they are twice of day one and so on. On day 30, the pond is full. So on what day will it be half full? 29. On what day it will be quarter full? 28. One eighth on 27. And one sixteenth on 26. One sixteenth is 6 percent. So on 26th day, if you visit that pond, you will see it empty. Right? And you will give it up. This is done. But you are surprised. You just go there in four days and it is full. Ladies and gentlemen, to me, India is lilies in the pond on the 26th day. And that is the exponential part. Because when I talked about doubling up, that's the exponential we are talking about. Is it happening? Just uh, let me give you some example. India in 1750 had a quarter of world's GDP. What happened in 1991? We had to pawn our gold. Why? Because there was a balance of payment default. So we're down. And today we talk about $600 billion foreign exchange reserves, basically. So we went down and we went up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on our way up. You just look at India GDP. It took 67 years to reach one trillion. But the next trillion came in eight years. And the following trillion came in one year. That's the exponential. All right? You look at, uh, uh, for example, a sector. Take IT, IT services. The first 100 billion took 30 years. The second 100 billion took 10 years. And the third 100 billion took 3 years. That's the exponential. That's my title, Exponential Inspirator. All right? So don't undermine a lilies in the pond on the 26th day because you don't know what the future is. So don't judge it by the current, judge it by the slope. Let's look at uh, corporates, for example. I talked about the country, I talked about a sector. Let's look at corporates. I've been on the Reliance Board for 17 years and I've seen them grow. It took them 15 years to become a billion dollar company. In next 15 years, they did not double up. They went up by a factor of 10. So from 10 billion, they went to, uh, the 1 billion, they went to 10 billion. In the next five years, again 10x, 10 into 10, 100 billion. And the following three years, that means the last three years, they have doubled up, 200 billion. And now, as I speak, it is close to 300 billion. And as I know, there will be a half a trillion dollar company within the next four to five years, the way things are going. Can you just be, uh, sort of imagine uh, the kind of exponential that we are talking about? Now, you would say, what is fundamental as far as the growth is concerned? Because we all want growth. We want accelerated growth. We have lost a lot of time. As I said, for six, 67 years, you know, therefore, in 1991, I mean, uh, 2007, when India celebrated 60 years, I celebrated 16 years. It was 1991 when we opened up. All right? That is where the great story that I'm talking about began. Right? So, therefore, we have to get into fundamentals and see what is very important. And it boils down to the discussion we had in the morning. If you look at growth, United States of America, the growth was because of roads and railways, the physical infrastructure, which we are now doing at a rapid pace. 
For UK, it was textiles. For Sweden, it was timber and timber products. For Denmark, it was milk and milk products. For Middle East, it was oil. If you ask me what is uh, the oil for India, I would say Indian talent. Okay? In fact, Atulji used to say IT is India's future. I also used to say IT is India's future, but not as in information technology, sort of Indian uh, talent. And you can see that, because if you look at the equation, education into opportunity is equal to the future, you can see some of the Indians, how they're built. I was just, I'm coming back from Silicon Valley. I was giving a keynote in a, uh, what was called as a GMG Excellence Summit. And I met several Indians uh, uh, and so on and so forth. And the amazing uh, things that they have done, I mean, it's incredible. I, mean, I visited, by the way, uh, the Tesla factory. All right, massive, producing 19,000 vehicles per day. Uh, you know, and it's a wonder, as a matter of fact. But you know who is the boss there? He's an Indian, Rishikesh. <laughs> Education into opportunity. You look at the top five CEOs, for example. All right? Our GDP is around $3 trillion plus. But if you look at uh, the top two Indians who are uh, heading the companies, like Satya Nadella, Microsoft, it is 2.1 trillion, and Sundar Pichai, Alphabet, 1.5 trillion, that itself makes it 4 trillion. All right? You can't compare market cap with GDP. I understand that, but I'm just giving you sort of a, 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 a value. So I think the most important point here is that we, we should be proud, but not so proud when our Indians go and take over companies. We have to do it here. And that I'm most happy about. You know, people call me a dangerous optimist. I give you my autobiography. It is called Durdham Ashawadi, Dangerous Optimist. So I'm going to be dangerous optimist in this lecture also. And I am really encouraged by uh, sort of what I see among the youth. And I, I'm very happy to see uh, a number of uh, young people here. I was interacting with uh, some young people. I, I tried to do that so that at 81 you feel younger. And I proudly mentioned to them about Satya Nadella and Sundar Pichai. I said, I'm very proud of our education system. Look at the kind of products we create, OK? And I mentioned about Sundar Pichai, and I mentioned about uh, 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 Satya Nadella. You know, the answer was very interesting. One young fellow got up, and he said, Sir, you, I don't think you understand what is in our sort of. So I said, why? I thought I said something good. He said, no, sir. Your generation, your only aspiration was to go to US somehow. The next generation go to US and get a job. The following generation not only go to US, get a great job like in Microsoft, but become CEO. Not us. Not us. We want to create our own Microsoft, our own Google here in India. That's the new uh, sort of generation, young generation. <laughs> you know, claps and smile don't cost anything. So when you want to give them, give them in abundance. <laughs> Feel free. So what uh, actually is happening today in India? Aspiration is fine to do that, but are our coming back to startups also something that we discuss in the morning? You just look at the picture. And I must thank uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi for his vision and what he has done by creating this startup India as a sort of a movement. Until 2016, we had 471 startups which are formally registered. In 2023, just in seven years, we have 90,000, 200 fold increase, an exponential. <laughs> then you will give me one bigger applause when I tell you the next. Until 2016, we had one unicorn per year. Unicorn is a billion dollar market cap company. In 2021, not one per year, we had one per week. <laughs> Almost. 
not 52, I have to be correct as a scientist, 44, but almost. That's fantastic. Then we say, so what, they come, they go, what happens to them? What does it mean? I would tell you even a better news now. So I got the analysis done. I said, where do they come from? Do they come from elite institutions? Do they come from IMS? Because we have few elite institutions. And if they are producing it, it's a good news, but not such a great news. All right? There is a great news. Close to 50% of them, they are not IIT IIMs. They come from tier three cities, tier two cities, and some of them are dropouts. This is democratization of life. Now, can you just imagine from a small village in Goa, a 26, 28 year old young son of a, let's say, a farmer, having a trillion dollar market? Why has this happened? That is because of the digital access. All right? And several things have gone sort of well. For example, open source software rather than having to pay expensive windows, uh, cloud storage, uh, right? And some other factors that I will shortly uh, explain to you. I think so. The, the first part of my speech, therefore, is explaining the exponential. And as you can see, I have given you examples across the board to show how that exponential is taking place. Now, we uh, look at the factors that are responsible also for that exponential, like in the digital world. As I said, I've been on the board of uh, uh, Reliance for 17 years, and I also chair the Reliance Innovation Council. We had uh, kind of Nobel laureates, C.K. Pranlad and uh, George Whitesides and a whole range of uh, people uh, sort of uh, it has been very engaging. And I remember once I was having a discussion with Mukesh. Normally before the board or after the board we have some discussion. And he said, Doc, we must uh, leave rock to something. So I said, Mukesh, do you know why the do uh, frog leaps? He said, I don't know. I said, he leaves because he's afraid of the predator and jumps a few feet. Okay? Do you want to do that because you are afraid of the competitor and jump a few feet? Or do you want to pole vault? The size of the pole is the size of your aspiration. And he loved it. And we created a program called Beyonders. What is Beyonders? Beyonders are those who will make impossible possible and go beyond the rims of possibility and achieve something. And then we supported them, created a program, etc. But uh, did pole vaulting take place? Yes, it did. If you look at 2017, February, okay, India, among 231 nations, was somewhere at the bottom, 156. After Joe came, within one year, we did not leapfrog to 100. We pole vaulted to number one. And in terms of mobile data consumption, we have stayed number one all along. And why was that? Because data was four rupees per GB, voice was free. This was affordable excellence. Excellence because it was 4G LTE being given so affordable. And that was a kind of democratization. And what happens is that once you start creating, because we talked about uh, our road and railway infrastructure not being uh, you know, it, it now is sort of shaping up in a sort of big way, thanks to uh, Honorable Nitin Gadkaji and others, etc. But as far as our uh, digital public infrastructure is concerned, it grew in a massive way. And that is what is, I like to call as a combinatorial innovation. That means there are several components of it and then they came together, like India Stack and so on and so forth. And there, I must say, policy and technology, they matter, they come together. Once again, if you see Jandan Yojana, mobile, Aadhaar, they were brought together. This is a combination of technology, policy, system delivery, and so on and so forth. And you can see that uh, in 2014, for example, within one week, we had 1.4 crore accounts. And that has got Guinness Book of Record. So it became the fastest financial inclusion 
can you just see okay and there was combinatorial because Aadhaar uh, if Aadhaar was not there this would not have been possible okay so this is sort of inclusion but most importantly what I'm always worried about is inclusion because the benefits must go to all and if you just see during COVID times we could transfer because the, the India was the most unbanked uh, let's say country and you can see the transformation that has uh, sort of taken place also for example during COVID times they could get the money uh, women for example bank accounts only 19% jumped to 56% so as to say and that is a sort of a, a to inclusion and this combinatorial of uh, uh, public uh, digital infrastructure has worked wonders for example uh, in uh, digital payments we have become number one would you have ever imagined that the digital payments that we have would be US and China added together surpassing them by uh, sort of uh, several times in fact 2022 89.5 billion were transferred 1.6 trillion dollar value and if you look at UPI May 23 9 billion uh, transactions uh, and UPI is now in demand in sort of other countries looks unreal isn't it if you just were there lilies in the pond just 10 years ago this would have looked impossible but it looks sort of possible we talk about um, sustainability and I'm very happy that Goa is focusing very strongly on sustainability I saw uh, uh, sort of many reports on how you are moving on that let's look at that because I just don't want to focus on digital you will say what is happening in other sectors now just see that when you use these lamps uh, you have uh, let us say uh, these uh, CFL as it's called compact filament lamp and you also had the incandescent lamp that's what we're using isn't it and they consume energy for example 7 watt LED uh, light emitting dial 50% of 14 watt CFL and uh, uh, 60 watt uh, uh, incandescent lamp almost 90% uh, uh, sort of reduction so you create carbon footprint what has happened is we created a record we moved from 0.2% share of LEDs within 6 years we jumped to 88% how was it possible that was by demand aggregation by demand aggregation we brought down the cost by factor of nine rupees uh, uh, 310 in 2014 to 38 rupees 310 to 38 rupees and plus we are system deliveries through ESL and uh, other things etc and the impact has been 40 million tons of carbon dioxide sort of reduction now here is lilies in the pond this happened in six uh, six years that means when it was 0.2 percent it was like that pond 94 percent empty you would have said nothing can happen but within six years yeah. so ladies and gentlemen the central point i am trying to make is that we must keep this habit of growing exponentially right. now how sort of uh, uh, this growth can be maintained what are the factors that can come in all right now let's focus on that because that's very important I remember uh, uh, this Asia economic dialogue that was being held in Pune and uh, uh, this is Pune International Center I happen to be the chairman and uh, Dr. Vijay Kelka happens to be uh, the vice chairman and this Asia economic dialogue this is the fourth year and we get people from all around the world and now people are even referring it to uh, this as a divorce of the East, so as to say. And Dr. Jay Shankar was the chief guest. This happened just a few months ago. And I began my talk by saying that we have to worry about three C's. The three C's are uh, uh, simple. It is uh, COVID, conflict, and climate. COVID, we are still not recovered. We are just recovering and conflict you know Ukraine how it has affected and you don't know the next conflict maybe Taiwan we don't know and climate is a sort of a continuing challenge and I remember somebody 
uh, said uh, uh, Dr. Mashilkar, and uh, by the way, Dr. Jayashankar responded by a beautiful answer, giving three Cs which can combat these three Cs. That I will sort of take. So what happens when you have a growth and suddenly COVID came and growth came down? Suddenly conflict came and there was a challenge and so on and so forth. So somebody said there is a fourth C that Dr. Mashilkar missed, that is chips, semiconductor chips. That can be a, a sort of a big conflict and we need to worry about. So what it means is that when you are growing exponentially, suddenly these inhibitors come. Like in enzyme kinetics, the growth, there is an inhibitor and then the sort of growth starts. So we need to worry about this growth. And therefore, whatever happens, we have to be resilient. Okay. And resilience, there are 10 tenets. I have a separate lecture on this, uh, which are adaptability, agility, resilient thinking, uh, autonomous innovation, uh, total alignment, digitalization, platformization, senior building, etc., etc. Now, this is becoming very important. For our students, for example, we don't teach them resilience. In my judgment, this is a VUCA word, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, and VUCA is the new normal. Let us take that. And therefore, our students have to prepare for themselves. And therefore, all these factors, they have to be sort of, uh, uh, sort of enunciated to them, and they have to be uh, sort of prepared. I am a Sir Louis Matheson Distinguished Professor at Monash University for the last 15 years, and I had given these talks on resilience, and they now introduce resilience in, as an as a important factor in their engineering, by the way. All right? So this growth inhibitor, to prevent it, how do we remain resilient? You might want to hear some examples on how one can become resilient. For example, resilient thinking. You know, Dhirubhai Ambani, when he started his uh, Jamnagar refinery, as usual, he called the foreign consultants. And uh, the foreign consultant asked him the obvious. For what specification would you like to design the refinery? He said, for all from the dirtiest to the finest. They said, but there is no such refinery in the world. He said, there is always a first time. And they build that. Today, that refinery processes 200 plus crudes. So no matter what happens in the world, as you can see, their margins are the highest. Then, adaptability and agility. You know, Jio, the way it grew, I'm giving one example from one industry so that you will understand basically what we need to do. You know, to get 50 million customers, for telephone it took 50 years, mobile 12 years, YouTube 4 years, uh, Facebook 3 years, and Twitter 2 years. Reliance did it in 83 days. They now hold the record. And of course, ChatGPT has broken all records. So I'm not talking about that. And the reason they could do was that they did onboarding in 15 minutes, not 2 days. And the reason that they could do was that they could use Aadhaar to do the EKYC. All right, that is know your customer by doing the e-way. And then suddenly Supreme Court came and said, you can't use other. So gone, the way they were accelerating, right? Exponential comes in danger, isn't it? The moment uh, you say you can't have that speed because you can't do that. They immediately went into an alternative and they created an image-based authentication, hyperverge. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence platform, an alternative, within 15 days, and they were back on track. So I think we must understand that VUCA is the new normal. It will come because of internal factors, external factors, and we'll have to sort of The other important part, and I want to emphasize this, because again, it goes back to our conversation in the morning. There is what is called as talent, technology, and trust. The trust deficit creates a problem in growth. I'll give you an example. You know, in my mother's name, I have created this Anjani Mashilkar Inclusive Innovation Award, and I'll come to that a little later. And one of the uh, winners was Namin Khanna from ICGB. You know, when you have dengue, it takes a couple of days, one or two days, whether you have a dengue, at what stage it is, and so on. He created something which can do it in 15 minutes. Just 15 minutes, he had two markers. Okay, US FDA approved, US patents granted, patents here granted. We will not buy them. 
Why? We are importing from US, we are importing from Australia, we are importing from South Korea. Then came a pandemic. All the kits were running out and we went, give us few lakhs in uh, such. Two countries said we can't and only South Korea said we will. And as luck would have it, they loaded it on a ship which went to Africa, not to India. So we had no kits. What to do? We had no other alternative but to go to Navin Khanna. Navin Khanna's market share at that time was 0%. Today it is 78%. Imagine that ship had come to India. What would I buy mean? 0%. So I think it is most important that we have trust in our young people. And that is where we have to create systems, even in our startup, where we give them an opportunity. All right? We trust them. We take risks on them. Venture capital cannot be vulture capital. Venture capital has to be adventure capital. And how do we create that? You know, there is this Maharashtra State Innovation Society, of which I have been the co-chairperson. The other uh, uh, co-chair is the Skill Development Entrepreneurship Minister. And, uh, uh, of course, I am permanent. I remain Mashelkar. The ministers, they keep on changing. And uh, 2018, for example, we had a new startup policy. And I argued. I said, uh, Sachin Tendulkar, at the age of 15, he scores a century. But he can't get into test because there is a 10-year <laughs> you know, -year experience. And as you know, startup is a startup. Where is the experience? And if you have the normal tender process, how will you give him the thing? So we change the tender process as far as the young people are concerned. And I was just uh, giving an example to the Honorable Minister in the morning that there was a drone, a startup on drone which was clearing the liquid surfaces. Uh, basically, he was given the work order by PCMC, not following the tender process, but there is some other process that we have followed. He was successful. He got more orders. And today, he is one of the leading, within four years, he has become one of the leading uh, suppliers uh, to defense on surveillance equipment. So giving that opportunity is possible. So exponential, this particular part about talent, technology, and trust is very uh, sort of critical. The other thing that I worry about India, and there are some others, I will not have time to go into that. Uh, I have written separately about it and elaborated quite a lot, is about the degrowth that can take place See, we talk about India at 75. We are very proud. But we need to worry about Bharat at 75. What is Bharat at 75? 70% still in villages. Government statistics shows that in urban areas, one out of six is in slums, Jugis. Government statistics shows that one out of four is below the poverty line. And after COVID, it has become worse. That is our Bharat. And therefore, if that difference keeps on increasing, we have a challenge. Inequality is a sure way of getting into social disharmony and the rest goes this thing. And that's why I'm very happy to see a lot of the scheme that we have launched, how, how they are trying to sort of reduce that inequality. Now, in order to make it clear as to what is India at 75 and Bharat at 75, I'll give you an example. A friend of mine, uh, I'm president of this Sarupa Vardini, which looks at education of the poor and so on. It's, uh, I'm the vice president, the vice president was Uday Gujar. He brought his uh, grandson to me. He's just eight year old during COVID time. And he said, we have a problem with this boy. So I said, what is the problem? He said, he knows everything. I said, how can that be a problem if he knows everything? So I said, sit down. Uh, what is your favorite subject? He said, all subjects. Very confident boy, eight years. So because it was uh, COVID time, I said, let's talk about biology. I said, what is the difference between bacteria and virus? Perfect answer. Then I raised the bar. I said, I have heard something about mutation. What is it? Perfect answer. Eight-year-old boy, huh? Then I raised the bar further. I said, what is spike protein? Almost 70, 80% correct. Then we went to DNA. 
And I had on this iPad a photograph of my having a breakfast with Watson. Watson was the Nobel laureate. Watson and Crick got the uh, Nobel Prize for finding the structure of DNA, as you know, the double helical structure. I said, who is he? He couldn't recognize. So uh, I said, he's Watson and Tuck came the answer, Watson and Crick. And as you know, there was a third scientist who should have got the Nobel Prize, that la lady. He mentioned her name and said she should have got. Eight year old, how does he know that? Then I said, tell me, uh, who is the scientist who has got two Nobel Prizes? Immediately, Madame Curie, including the year. I said, no, no, Linus Pauling also got two. He said, no, the first one was for science, second one was for peace eight year old and has not gone for, to school for one year because of COVID. So I asked his uh, grandfather and uh, father, you are not scientist, how come he knows so much? He said we have trusted him and have given him Google, full access to Google. Google is his Google. <laughs> then I alerted his father that he is using his brain as a storage. He has to use it as an intelligent processor and that's why he will need a guru. In the same week, you know, I get another news. So here is young boy just flying because he got the access. Shraddha Pol, a 15-year-old girl in a village near Satara, commits suicide. Why? She couldn't give the online exam. Why? Because she did not have access to online learning. Why? Because her father and mother were so poor that they could not give it to her. So here is this boy, India at 75, flying, and here is this girl, which is no more, because she belongs to Bharat Exhibit. This is not tenable. This is not tenable. And we have to do something. And for that, I think we have to look at a new alternative, which is giving access equality despite income inequality. Now, how do you do access equality despite income inequality? Can you do the magic, for example, an electrocardiogram takes, let us say, 500 rupees. Can you do it in 5 rupees? Looks impossible. Uh, then mother's health has to be monitored, pregnant mothers, all right? How do you monitor it on 1 rupee per day? Looks impossible. Breast cancer. You have to do mammography and so on and so forth. You have to spend a uh, large amount of uh, money, etc. Can you do it just for one dollar? Looks impossible. All right. Hemoglobin takes 150, 200 rupees to find out. Can you do it in five rupees? Looks impossible. But all that impossible has been made possible in India, right here. In my mother's name, I have created what is called as an Anjani Mashelkar Inclusive Innovation Award. Inclusive Innovation. You know, I used to leave whatever money I had with her whenever I came. Uh, to Pune, every weekend I used to come because I used to be in the research lab and I have this habit of carrying cash, I used to give it to her. We never asked her what she did, but on the last day, uh, I mean after she passed away, I remember Shruti, my daughter was checking and she found all that money there, saying that don't forget our roots, help those who are doing science for the poor. And I created this foundation. That foundation, what, <laughs> thank you. And that foundation, what it does is that there are two things we do. Making high technology work for the rich, very easy. Making low technology work for the poor, very easy. Making high technology work for the poor, very difficult. We give awards to that. Secondly, we always go by best practice. I'm following best practice. Are you are then following. Create the next practice. All the awardees so far are following the next practice. And all this has happened. I'll take, uh, uh, <laughs> like a magician, I'll take something. You know, we talked about ECG. What happens? You go there, lie, 12 lead, half an hour, nurse comes, print out. There's a portable ECG. What you have is a portable ECG. This is today, in 12 countries, more than 25 lakhs have been sold. It just costs 4,000 rupees, 
So per ECG, if you say that it's contract cost, it should not be even 5 rupees. How do you operate it? You put your two thumbs here for 15 seconds. There's a sensor here. This is your heart. 15, 15, 15 seconds. 15, 15, 15 seconds. And if you have downloaded an app called Sanket, all right, it can go to anyone. So imagine now an old lady in a village. She has pain in the middle of the night. All right, and you have to take her uh, to get her ECG. You don't have to put her in a bullock cart or a motorcycle or a jeep and go several kilometers. You can do it from where you are, provided connectivity is sort of available, which now sort of uh, we are providing. Can you just imagine what difference it can make? And this is, by the way, uh, US FDA certified, CE certified, and so on and so forth. It is uh, absolutely incredible. I talked about the mother. Uh, there is uh, this Senthil whose sister was pregnant. She was in a village. She used to go several kilometers to do her monthly check, etc. Uh, he's a genius. He created this IoT sensor based system, which she wears. There are, and also AI enabled, and uh, it can do uh, seven parameters with great sort of accuracy. And data goes into the cloud, it is monitored remotely, etc. And just 1,000 rupees for 1,000 days for her as well as uh, the child. It is going to hundreds of villages now, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra. In Andhra Pradesh now, they've made it mandatory for rural villages. You can see what difference it makes. All right. Now, the most important, and I want to congratulate you, sir, for this, the breast cancer, that $1. In fact, I showed it to you in the morning. I didn't want to carry it because that could not fit in my pocket, actually. So this is something that you just move around the breast. You don't have to do uh, anything subject to radiation, nothing, absolutely. And within five minutes, you get to know. And I must applaud you that Goa government took this up. This is called eye breast, OK? And uh, we, we, we have a great uh, health minister, of course, Vishwajit Rane. He introduced it. One lakh is the target. And I picked up yesterday's data, 11 August, 70,000 you already covered. Now, can you just imagine? No one has to die because they were not screened. And this is just uh, $1. And I can give you several examples of uh, like this. In fact, we had an interesting discussion in the morning on how, because this is transformative. This is totally transformative. Because the important part is the diagnosis is such that first of all, uh, you don't require any technician. It is user-friendly. It is affordable. It is high technology. It is non-invasive. Once these four parameters are met, you can see the transformation that uh, actually takes place. Uh, we have some other one also, Bandicoot, which again, you had the vision to sort of adopt it. What is Bandicoot? You know, we talk about manhole. Some uh, sort of college students said, why a man should be in the hole? That is derogatory. It should be machine. Right? And what is wrong with manhole? Because these manual scavengers, they die, actually. You know, they start drinking because they can't. Uh, and young age, 20, 30, uh, they die, and so on. So they said they should be machines. So they created a robot which goes. Today it is in 17 states, by the way. And Goa has also taken uh, sort of a lead. Now you will ask the obvious question. The obvious question will be, if robot replaces that uh, uh, man, what happens to man's family? All right? So what they have done is that they have trained those manual scavengers on operating a robot. Now just see, I, I talked about access equality. This is access to dignity. Why? Because let's say their children in the school were asked, what does your father do? They would have put their head down and said he's a manual scavenger. Now they can put their head up and say he's a robot operator. And I'm very happy that, uh, thank you. And I'm very happy that there was a Rajya Sabha MP who was present 
during the award ceremony. We give these awards on 17 November, which we celebrate. That is the day my mother passed. But we celebrate that as a national science, uh, national social innovation summit from Pune International Center. So he was there. And he was a part of the rehabilitation committee. And he took it there, and then it went up. And today there is a bill, basically, to sort of uh, uh, change uh, this man to machine and bring the dignity, etc. And uh, uh, we'll change. So transformation. So I'm giving these examples in order to just illustrate to you that exponential is true, because these are exponentially reduced costs. At the same time, affordable excellence, without losing the high technology component of it. And that becomes transformative, as you can quite clearly see. So when I talk about exponential inspirator, these are the inspirations. And if I had three hours more, I would have given you several other examples, but I don't have. So I will finish with the next uh, uh, five, uh, five, uh, five minutes or so. Now, what I will uh, uh, do is, uh, I'm 81 now. Okay, so I've learned a lot in life, many times by failures. By failures, you learn more than success. So I will just end up my lecture with five Mashelkar mantras that I have learned, because I see a number of young people here for whom these might be useful. So that is the end of my lecture. The first is, uh, uh, you keep on knocking on doors, particularly for the young, I'm, I'm emphasizing because purpose, perseverance, and passion matters. You keep on knocking on door, and they don't open. What you do? You open your own door. Create your own door. And in each case, I'll give an example, because that is how I learned. So I came back in 1976. I was teaching in England. India was a poor country, no foreign exchange. I was trained in rheology and non-Newtonian fluid mechanics. And I needed a uh, uh, rheogoniometer, Weizenberg Reorganiometer, model R18, I remember. And it would take me two years. No foreign exchange, so digitally clearance, not manufactured in India certificate. So that equipment was not available. Then I asked myself a question, what is the equipment God has given me? This. So I went into mathematical modeling and simulation. And those of you who are scientists, as you know, Bhatnagar Prize is the highest science prize you can get. I started work in 77, and in 82, I got the Bhatnagar Prize. All right. Had I not opened my own door, I would be still waiting for that Vaisenberg So that is the first lesson I've learned. The second is aspirations are your possibilities. Keep them high. I became the director of National Chemical Laboratory in 1989, two years before liberalization. Closed economy. What used to happen was, we were doing import substitution, copying, reverse engineering. So anytime our scientists did something which was ahead of the rest of the world, I went to industry, they would say, uh, but has Europe done it? Has US done it? If they have not done it, how can you do that? So I remember 1st June 1989, it took over. In an auditorium of capacity of 540, there were 1,100 people. And I addressed them. And I said, we'll convert National Chemical Laboratory into International Chemical Laboratory. What did it mean? I said, what am I selling knowledge? What is my market? The whole world. And I said, we can even license our patents to multinationals. And I took the name of G, General Electric, because I was doing polymer, and General Electric had some breakthrough. So, at the end, a young fellow came to me and he said, uh, uh, do you realize that G's R&D budget is two and a half times India's R&D budget? I said, it is not the power of budget that matters. It is the power of idea that matters. And since you talked about G, we'll take on G. And I remember I was doing that mathematical modeling and simulation. From that, I had got an idea about what is called as a solid state polycondensation of this engineering plastic called polycarbonate. All right, forty percent world market share was G's. They were leaders, and we licensed three patents to G in 1992 
for close to a million dollars. That was the first reverse transfer of technology to that leader. So it is not the power of budget, it is the power of ideas. Right? That's extremely important. And that led to uh, something else, because Jack Welch said, if they are so good, why are they not there? And in Bangalore, they created Jack Welch R&D Center, and that followed others. And today, there are 1,500 R&D centers, as a matter of fact. That was the trigger. So remember this. Keep your aspirations high. National Chemical Laboratory to International Chemical Laboratory. The same people who are copying reverse engineering, when that challenge was given, they rose to the challenge. And India always rises to the challenge, as we have seen. The third lesson is particularly for the young. You can do anything, but not everything. So focus. That's very important. And I will tell you the uh, story about the focus. So what happened was, in the seventh standard, I had stood first with 88% mark, and we had to, I had to seek admission in the secondary school. And we required 21 rupees at that time. And my mother took more than 21 days to get that. And finally, she got it from her friend, who was a maid in a Gujarati family in Chaupati. By that time, and it was her life saving, she gave it to me. By that time, all the Admissions in good schools were closed. If you know Mumbai, you know, Wilson High School, Aryan High School, Chikitsak High School, and we went to a poor school. And that poor school was Union High School, where poor people, I mean, poor people's children went. But that poor school had rich teachers. One of them was uh, my science teacher, uh, uh, Principal Bhave. He did not believe in chalk and talk, you know, he would show us things, like, for example, so factory. Uh, just no chalk and talk and explain how that happens. He took us to a few. How many of you have actually visited a soap factory? Please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, yeah. I visited it at a young age. I did not have money to pay for the tram, but that teacher, he was also poor, but he paid my trap. We went to Vimco factory. And one day he did a, something that was the wow moment. You know, in all of our life, there is always a wow moment. He took us out into the sun. He had the convex lens in his hand. He had a piece of paper, and he wanted to show us how to find the focal length. He moved it up and down. And when the brightest spot came, he said, this is the focal length. And then he held it for some time, and the paper burnt. And he said, like this, if you focus all your energies, you can burn anything, you can do anything. That was an inspiration moment for me. I said, my God, science is so powerful, I must become a scientist. But later on, uh, I, I said, uh, it gave me the philosophy of life. But as I grew, I saw more in it. What did I see? That as far as the uh, convex lens is concerned, the sun's rays are parallel, OK? And what is the property of parallel lines? They never meet. What does convex lens do? It makes them meet. So I thought of convex lens leadership. When I took over as a director of National Chemical Laboratory, we had inorganic chemistry division, organic chemistry division, polymer chemistry division, 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 division. No two divisions will talk to each other. I said nothing. One NCL, team NCL, and so on. Then I became director general of CSR. And uh, I'm very happy that you are here in the audience because uh, Professor Shede, uh, no two laboratories will talk to each other. There was a challenge. You know, we had 40 laboratories and so on. I said, nothing doing. Team CSR, one CSR, and so on and so forth. And the magical day was 11 May 1998. We had 40 directors' conference. You were there. And they all signed a piece of paper called Bangalore Declaration. And what they said was, India matters to us. We want to matter to India more. All 40 laboratories coming to me. It was a magical moment. In fact, 11 May 1998, as you know, there were three technology events. One was our small aircraft, DRDO, uh, sort of uh, uh, having uh, their own 
uh, missile. And in the evening, Dr. Mulibanozo, she was the, we got uh, the news that Pokhran too had happened. And then I remember one thing led to the other. And uh, uh, during the Bhatnagar crisis, I remember Prime Minister was sitting here and Dr. Mulibanozo was here and we mentioned to him about calling that a technology day. And Atalji went, didn't respond anything at all, read out his entire speech, and then he said, I declare it on May 1990 as Technology Day. That was a very special day, and today we celebrate it. The point I'm trying to make is that how they converge. And later on, I became president of Global Research Alliance. I remember uh, CSR uh, India, CSR Australia, CSR South Africa, Front of the of Germany, VTT Finland, nothing common. $450 GDP per capita to $6,000 GDP per capita. But we got it all together with the alignment and so on. So one small lesson like this. I think for the nation also this is very important because race, religion, language, etc. can avert it. Remember what our Prime Minister says, Sapka Saad, Sapka Vishwas. We have to be Team Goa, Team India and so on and so forth. So that is the focus part. The fourth part is about uh, <clears throat> kind of mindset, positivism, and so on. You know, they say uh, parachute works only when it is open. Mind is also like that. It works only when it is open. And the ability to see the other points of view is very important. Once I remember my uh, granddaughter, Ishwari, she was learning alphabets. She was some four or five year old. So I sat down there and uh, said, let me test you out. She was sitting where you are sitting. And I'm here. So I wrote D. She said D. And I went on writing. And then I wrote Z. You know what she said? N. I said, no, beta. It is Z. She said, no, it is N. Now, I was right. And she was also right. It depends upon how you look. That is something that is missing. And I used it in an interesting way, by the way, because uh, Microsoft and another Indian company, they had a challenge. And uh, they chose me as a mediator. So when the Microsoft team came, the other team came, they sat. Then I explained to them, look at each other's from your sort of point of view. Uh, Microsoft is a multinational company. It has its own obligations. And this Indian company has its own limitations and so on. So do that, ZNN. By 5 o'clock, I got a message that whenever the negotiations were breaking down, they remembered this ZNN. And finally, they set it. Just that little ability. And this goes for all national conflicts that we have today. It's ability to do that and a sort of open mind. I think that is very, very important, and positivism. You know, people call me dangerous optimist. I'll tell you just one little story. Delhi University, I was invited for Physics Teachers Association, and there was a turmoil. And after the opening session, they were going to go to the Vice Chancellor with uh, uh, Morcha. And then somebody said, he introduced me, like you did, and he said, as you know, we are all in coma. And Dr. Mashelkar will tell us what to do. So I said, I'll never address 500 people in coma. Maybe he did not mean we are in coma, but we are at a coma. What does coma do? You have written half the sentence. You have not done the remaining. You write, maybe it's a positive one. Write another one which is positive. Para, which is positive. Page, which is positive. Chapter, which is positive. And then I left. You know what happened? After that, they met, had a discussion about uh, this coma and coma, and they dropped going there. This is what I mean by looking at the positivism. When you look at a half glass full, a half glass empty, uh, when there is a darkness, uh, you know, we start uh, accusing the government, but somebody has a sense to get a candle and sort of light it. So that's the fourth mantra that I have learned in my life. And the last one now. And the last one is that there is no limit.
to human achievement, there is no limit to human endurance, there is no limit to human imagination. You know, 1953, until that time, Everest was supposed to be not conquerable at all. Okay? But then Tenzing and Edmund Hillary conquered it. And after that, an 80-year-old has conquered it. A 14-year girl has conquered it. A blind man has conquered it. Somebody whose leg was amputated has conquered it. And somebody has conquered it 20 times. You understand? I think th that is the issue. So I have, uh, 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 Professor Siena Rao is my uh, sort of great guru. And he's a Bharat Ratna, as you know. Uh, and he has got everything other than Nobel Prize, and I hope he gets it one day. So when I became fellow of Royal Society, I called him. Because there have been only three engineering scientists in 363 years who have become fellow of Royal Society. The signature that one talked about and so on. So I thought he will be uh, very happy. And his answer was, not bad. So I was disappointed. Then I got another honor, American Academy of Arts and Science. Similarly, a big honor. Not bad. Then National Academy of Inventors, I, you know, I was the first one. I said, third, seven doesn't work with him. Then I said, sir, what do I have to do so that uh, I can impress you? His answer was very interesting, and I'll leave it with you. His answer was, he calls me Ramesh. My name is Raghunath Mashelkar, but uh, my mother starts calling me Ramesh. He said, Ramesh, you are climbing on a ladder of excellence, which is limitless. Okay? And the only limit is what you put on your head. Now, what it means, if you transcribe it in a different way, it means that no matter what you achieve, you have to say, my best is yet to come. So my advice to the young is, whether you are 18, you are 19, you said, no? So whether you are 19, 29, 49, 89, 99, you will all live for 100 years, by the way. Every day in the morning, you should get up and say, my best is yet to come. And today is going to be the day. And my best is not just for myself, my society, my Goa, my India. All right? And if all 1.4 billion people do that, what an India will create, what a Goa will create. I think that is the fifth lesson. I'll... Uh, I'll uh, just uh, end on a personal note uh, in two minutes. I remember giving the D.D. Kosambi memorial oration in 2011, and Satish, you had chaired that, and you remember what happened then. The title of my talk there was Making Impossible Possible. This was several years ago. Today also my talk is Making Impossible Possible. How can you <laughs> be exponential all the way? And uh, there I had said, uh, basically I had dreamed something about uh, Goa. And as you know, I was working, I was chairing that Goa uh, 2035 uh, sort of uh, uh, document. And I said, unfortunately, I won't be there when 2035 comes. Uh, but, and then I said something which scientists should not say. So I said, but I want to see my Goa in 2035, in its sort of full glory. And why doesn't the God take away the rest of my life, but allow me to come for one day in 2035? And you remember what happened then. Somebody got up in the audience and said, we want you to see Goa at 2035. So what we'll do is that each one of us will donate one week, one month of our life. I was very touched. That's what makes Goa special, by the way. It comes from here. And then after that, something very interesting happened. My Reinventing India book actually carries that because I was in Monash. And one uh, Shailesh Sanjgiri wrote to me, and I will read it out because I want to end this particular lecture on a note where I want to say how grateful I am. I'm very proud to have been born here. But I'm most grateful to you for the love and affection. And he wrote, I celebrated my 63rd birthday year to keep the promise made to you in Kala Academy 
on February 5, I have prayed to the Lord to debit one month of my life to credit to you for you to live long for the service to the nation and more uh, for you to see your beloved Goa at 2035. I'm sure all those who promised you that day will follow suit suitably. What do you say? When such abundance, such tsunami of affection comes to you, I consider myself very fortunate. I consider myself very fortunate. I, uh, I really want, I'm very happy with the way sort of we are moving. Our GDP per capita is higher than that of India. When I received the Padma Vibhushan, uh, not uh, the Gomanta Vibhushan, I had said that Goa is a developed state in a developing country. Basically, we should not compare ourselves with India. We have to sort of look at globally. And we are all dreaming now about India at 100. And we are setting some targets. But I'm looking at Goa at 75 to not only meet those targets, but exceed those targets. And I want to see that day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you for that mesmerizing lecture. And all of us will be present here to welcome you once again when Goa at 75. Everybody in this audience will take their seats. Now as a token of our sharing love and caring relationship with you, I would request our Chief Minister, Dr. Pramod Savant, to present this memento to Dr. Mashilkar. Ladies and gentlemen, we will conclude this function by uh, vote of thanks proposed by Shri Deepak Bandekar, Director, Department of Information and Publicity. And after that, may I request all of you to kindly join for tea and coffee. It's outside the hall. Thank you. Good evening to all of you. Our keynote speaker for today's memorial lecture, Dr. Rabinath Mashelkar, Honorable Chief Minister Dr. Pramod Savant, dignitaries in the audience, ladies and gentlemen. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks for today evening. First and foremost, I will express my gratitude to Dr. Raghunath Mashelkar for accepting the invitation to deliver this memorial lecture in spite of his busy schedule. And in today's lecture, enlightening us on various topics, including education, opportunities, and nation as a whole having opportunities to grow exponentially. Thank you, sir. I would also like to thank Honorable Chief Minister, Dr. Pramod Savan, for attending this memorial lecture and always giving us support and guidance in arranging this memorial lecture. My thanks to Secretary of Education, Sri Prasad Lolyekar, for his welcome speech and introduction of the keynote speaker. Special thanks to Yatin Kakodkar for giving all the cooperation for in organizing this memorial lecture. I would also like to thank all the friends from media, Anjim Jim Khana, also Dr. Vaidya for comparing this function and also each and every one of you for attending this memorial lecture. And last but not the least, my colleagues from the department who has worked hard for arranging this memorial lecture. Thank you. <laughs>